Swami Vishnudevananda gives a talk on yoga and psychic discoveries, June 9th, 1984. Hari Om was 
the great Mantravadi. It means in Kerala, Mantravadi means he is a medicine man like American Indian. He, is, he knows the mantras, how to bring certain phenomena by which spirit will be removed or exhausted, create emotion based on the patient. And this happens in our house every new moon by my late husband. When I was still young, I used to watch this phenomena with curiosity. Though I was born in that family, I am also educated in the modern education. I studied physiology, chemistry, which was my main subject. So one of the phenomena when the patient is brought by the family because she has been possessed by a spirit. And my late husband is a great Nandarwadi. People come from far and wide. And the new moon day, he performed this particular ceremony to, to get the spirit off. In their family temples also, there are Sathic temples and also the backyard, there will be a temple dedicated to primitive tribal gods. So that they control the spirit world. And my late family used to do special meditation on this primitive type of primitive god. That's not actually true in your religion, but that kind of a black heart or whatever you want to call it. But he's a specific in that. And he got control over one of the great spirit. And he used to worship the spirit every new moon. And I used to watch. And there will be a lot of mandala, geometrical thing has been created. In the center, a woman is brought who is supposed to be possessed by the spirit. And she sits in the middle. And um, their relatives, her relatives are all their husband and other relatives are nearby. And uh, this mantra was my lady. He will sit in the front and he will start repeating certain specific mantras. Within the minute, her body will change, her voice will change. If it's a male spirit, she has a male voice. Her voice will change into a male voice, no more a female voice. And in the front of the diagram, there will be lots and lots of food for the spirit. When the spirit manifests, she is very hungry or she is very hungry, what is the spirit's name? And so to appease this girl, she will put a long, enormous amount of rice, toddy, a kind of low-fat beef, is made of a palmera. Because the spirit likes this negative type of food, though we are vegetarian, for the ghosts they keep this gold curry and uh, toddy, rice, enormous amount will be there. Actually, it's about eight or ten people can eat. That amount of food will be there. And he started chanting, and also he has two shots for body bodyguards there. Because suddenly, this woman, though they're very weak, and she, her voice changes and she violently shakes, and her power is as much as a masculine man. Not even one or two men may cannot stop her. The three or four people necessary to hold her, to control. The initial vibration is so intense, the four or five bodyguards will try to hold her and keep her. And then she will ask the question, Who are you? And the spirit will say, for the different type of vocal cords, voice changes, and my name is such and such, and I am such and such person. Give a little history about how he died, etc. And uh, then to conclude the story, the Mantravadi will say, Now you have to leave this person. And um, so that he has been offered all the food. And uh, that is the mystery. I do not care about any other thing. As I'm an educated person, I used to watch it. This person, this woman, eats all that food, about eight or ten people's food, as if she has never seen food at all. With both the hands, she swallowed everything. And within a few minutes, the entire place, or wherever she's been kept, all disappears. Even the huge bottle of toddy. And then the ghost will say, well, I will leave this woman and I will come back with that story in. I do not know whether it's actually spirit or what, but that's not my investigation in that time as an end man. 
I studied physiology, I studied chemistry, I know how the food goes from the mouth, the residual saliva, and then going down to the stomach and then through the intestine. You can only have a certain amount of food you all know how much you can eat. But about eight or ten people food is there. That entire food disappears by one person. And after 15 minutes that she becomes normal, she feels normally hungry and goes and eats her normal food. That thing which made me that what scientific explanation is there for this. So I started asking questions in my childhood. What is this phenomenon? Because I did not do much believe in the ghosts and spirits, etc. So my investigation started in my childhood when I was eight, nine, ten years old. All my life. So I was brought up in that situation. So for me, ghosts and spirits are not new. As he was talking, everything what he said, immediately I remembered my earlier life. Then I used to go and sit in his study, in my later in the study, I used to work. One type of month I used to repeat what he's doing. And uh, all the manuscripts are written in farm days, ancient days, there were no. And all the still, many of the ancient uh, Mangalwadi, they never used paper, they used only farm leaves, and with a nail, uh, they used the, suppose this is the farm leaf, and uh, there's a big nail there, and uh, this nail is kept like that, and uh, his thumb, he, he, they make a big, small dent into the, into the palm leaf. So I opened this palm leaf and what type of mandras and so forth. I studied a little bit to understand, but you know, it was all mumbo jumbo those days for me. There was no meaning at all. So that was my first encounter with the ghost and spirits and psychic phenomena. That amount of food goes into the stomach, it disappears. Why? Why her voice is changed? Nobody can create a voice like a male voice by a female, unless uh, maybe uh, people, uh, Sweet uh, seller can maybe. Uh, it's very difficult. And the strength of that woman becomes five or ten people. In one of the things, actually, I watched the spirit was a very negative spirit in one of the say, uh, this, this uh, particular ceremony. And uh, the spirit began, as soon as the spirit manifested, it became so violent that nobody could stop because he's so hungry and bloodthirsty, the spirit. My late uncle cut his wrist and has to feed a human blood to appease that ghost. There's no other way to appease that. What I'm trying to say this phenomenon is not something to scare you or to frighten you. For us, it is nothing, <laughs> as he said. This phenomena are as natural as you see a drunkard fighting on the tree. So that's what first I want to tell about my life started in this type of family. This happens every new moon, because not on the white full moon, it's always new moon, the dark fourth night they do it. This type of black night is said used in exorcism and exorcism. I have seen this in my older life. That is to just give it a glimpse. For us, this phenomenon is nothing. Then why I am interested in this type of it's not that I'm personally interested, not it is such a big problem for us. I think it means nothing as the lady said. Same way when I was in Albuquerque in earlier days, I was in school, Albuquerque in the University of Albuquerque. End of the lecture, one student asked a question because a great scholar studies in India, Himalaya, and uh, I was wearing a wristwatch. So I, unfortunately, I don't have kept I gave somebody else. And uh, the student asked the question, why are you wearing the wristwatch? I said, so I can see the time. <laughs> He she has she got some kind of bigger answer. Only I'm wearing the one so I can see the time. <laughs> so why I am doing this ghost or talking with this type of phenomena? So that you westerners, you look upon this phenomena as supernatural, as beyond the imagination of the scientific world. For you it is strange and very uh, super. Um, in, the, in your approach in this, for us it is as natural as you play with a tape recorder or a radio. That's the difference. It has got no meaning for us because we know this happens every day, every minute. Now, what is this philosophy behind all these ghosts and spirits, etc.? I'll take a little bit into philosophical terms and my own personal experience. First, as John said about we had 
Suddenly, what? We had a fire walking ceremony. After we had a fire walking ceremony, we had also a ceremony. First time, a poverty ceremony, which means we have a, a special type of arts made up of specific cloth and other material. And this poverty is carried in religious ceremony through the streets where the Hitler marched in Berlin. But the unique thing of this particular poverty is there are 108 spears, and this spear is little less than this thickness, and 108 spears are put into the flesh of the body, 108 of them, water injured into the body. John Madison or any other Sarah, John Mary John. There. And 108 of them. We took more than an hour to clear because it was cold, uh, spring time, not spring, I think, uh, it is just before the summer. And uh, it's cold, and uh, the spears won't go into the flesh. We literally push it several times, it broke and then bent. And finally, it took more than an hour. You try to put one nail in your, in your body. How you just put a doctor try to put a nail, you close your eyes. Here, 108 of them. And this none of them is sterilized. Here is our doctor, my dentist doctor is here. And um, will you put a needle without sterilizing in your patient doctor? Never dare to do. 108 of them without sterilization, and many of them fell down to John saw that. It falls in, sometimes falls on the ground, you face directly again, push it through the skin. 108 of them. And then two hours we walked with that 108 spears, the man was walking all the way. To the end of the ceremony, to the same street which are not. Now, can you answer what is the phenomenon behind? Why there is no pain? Of course, maybe mental um, uh, stuff is not good, you can say. Then, what happened to the bleeding? You try to put a needle in the bleeding there. Is. You ask doctor, can you see anything without bleeding? Can you put a needle? So, here the doctor says. And then, why there is no infection? It's not sterilized. Any answer, Dr. Sardar, can you give me how there's no infection? And after 808 spirits are removed, and uh, Dr. John, what was, have you seen any trace of blood anywhere? How do you explain this phenomenon? There comes again the spirit world. And Marilyn, a great psychic, I respect her for her honesty, straightforwardness, and truthfulness, because I don't move with ordinary people. When they do not tell the truth and they pretend and they act as what they are not, doesn't matter who they are, whether Indian saint or American saint, I don't care. I will tell always the truth and expose anyone who is not truthful and honest in the name of religion and God. I will never anybody take advantage of the human being. But madam, of course, I don't want to go too much. She's a genuine psychic. I respected her. I know her ability and so on. But anyhow. That phenomenon, Matthew John also saw, before the able to split that 108 spears, we performed ceremony for several days. For seven days, this man won't eat any uh, ordinary meat, you no know, meat, vegetarians, and no alcohol. We perform, he will take one small meal, etc. But at the end of the ceremony, Matthew saw and John saw, Matthew actually could see the psychic phenomenon. Then he is an young man. Suddenly, because of you, the maybe John, maybe tomorrow we can show you something. We have time. We put that uh, brother function is there. So time is there. Some other time. And uh, some other time we can go. Within second of the ceremony, end of the ceremony, the man's consciousness changed. There was a one that froze him up. He tackled 10,000 volt current. Literally. Suppose he had tackled a high voltage current. What would happen to your body? Suddenly there was a, a sudden and uh, explosion and then burning and then that exactly happened. He became unconscious and uncontrollable. So there were two people who took them. And then in that state, first his body consciousness changed now. And the first need uh, uh, side uh, uh, tail is put through his tongue. Straight. No pain. Second from this cheek to the chest. Second. Then 108 of them took every portion of it. Only after that, and Madden saw also, a spirit suddenly enters into this body. 
that particular moment, his body became violent. It went to touching a high voltage wire. Exactly happened to him, uncontrollably. And throughout that procession, two and a half hours, three hours, that spirit controlled his body. And only at that time, he is able to do this. And until he came and finished the ceremony, and then end of the ceremony, then he became normal. Then a small needle you put on his body, he would cry just like anybody else. That is for the ghost and the spirit. Some of these spirits do manifest through medium. But in majority of these type of phenomena, ghosts also spirits. We don't want to use the ghost because so many difficulties to explain this word, spirit and the ghost, etc. When these spirits manifest through human beings, they are able to overcome the physiological and the psychological functions of the body temporarily. And that is why this psychic phenomena takes place. As we heard from our venerable lady talking about the ghosts, etc. What exactly why this happens? Because these spirits do have a body just like you and me. In the Western psychology and physiology, you will talk only a human being is just a physical body, maybe a soul inside. And still, none of the Western religion explains what is a soul, how the soul functions, they do not know. Now they are able to explain what happens to the soul when the body is dropped on the earth plane. What happens to the soul? This phenomenon is not clearly and definitely explained, but yogis, yoga masters explained thousands of years ago. You have three vehicles, three bodies, not only one body. The physical body is the physical body which you see. This is called Annamaya Kosha. In Sanskrit, it means literally foot sheep. Foot because this physical body is made up of anna, anna means food, which you all know. You take a tomato, and tomato is converted into my body, and you go on eat, my tom eat, eat tomatoes and tomatoes, my body goes like a tomato. And then, when I die, you bury me and put a tomato plant. The tomato plant will say, ah, you ate me once upon a time, you remember? Now I'm going to eat you. And there are some beautiful tomatoes out of Swami Vishnu's body. <laughs> and you are eating the tomato, you are eating Swami. <laughs> you take yes, worm, I'm sure. No one eats a worm here in America or Canada. Perhaps have you seen anybody eating worm? But you give the worm to a fish. Oh, fish juicy, juicy, give me more. So fish grows by eating worms, and then you eat the fish. What are you eating actually? <laughs> you call it fish, but you eat nothing but worm. <laughs> <laughs> and you eat the fish, and then eventually you die, and you bury your bury, and you are buried under the ground. And then who eats you? Worm. <laughs> <laughs> so the body has come from the food cycle, and we go back into the food cycle. And that's called anime water. When they said this human body is not yours, it is came from the food. It will go back into food for something else. Food chain. That is not you. That's the most difficult thing for the Western mind to plan. You see, oh yes, here is a Catholic, he's a Protestant, he's a black, he's a white, he's an American, he's an Indian. You say this different word, but whether it's American Indian or a uh, fat form, German, whatever it is, you all made up of tomato, pizza, banana. Since this body is no meat, it's vegetarian body. But what it is made up of food, it will go back in the food. So that is not you. First, that's what yoga master said. This physical body temporarily is selected from the various food and converted and you are growing. And it cannot go forever like this flower. It cannot continuously keep this. It will fade eventually and become composed. As uh, just now, uh, one of my staff went and they learned how to compost the uh, toilet or something she learned from the university. So this becomes composed and then it becomes food again for the plants or animals. Beyond this physical body, you have another body. That in Sanskrit we call Sukhma Sarira. Or literal translation we can put as fertile body or as 
her body. What you insist on me is, it is exactly like the physical form, but it is made up of energy. If wavelengths are different from the physical wavelength, drop wavelength, this actual body contains your senses, ten senses, five senses of action, and five senses of knowledge. The ten senses, at present we have the physical sense, the five senses of action is hands, legs, nose, uh, mouth, and the respiratory organ. The two respiratory organs and the hands and the legs and the mouth makes it five action. So the no, uh, senses of action. Then five senses of knowledge, by which we get knowledge of this world, that I hear, know, taste, smell, and touch. These ten senses, according to the Western psychologists and doctors, it is the physical body you feel. But nowadays you know that it is not possible if it is only in the physical body, how a person under general anesthesia or a dead person near that experience sees things from another level. That's so many cases I was telling them. If it is the physical body, how is it possible? So our yoga man says, no, 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 these ten senses are not in the physical body, it is in the astral body. This what you have the physical senses only you are using, only with the visible colors and visible spectrum you can use it. But within that spectrum, within that thing, you got the inner eye, the two eye, two senses exist. If that is not so, then we will be able to see, hear, taste, smell, all the time, even the sleep or in the dream. But in the dream, you don't use this eye, you don't ease your ear, you don't need the taste, touch and taste. But you enjoy your dream, a dream pizza is as good as a baking pizza. How do you enjoy that dream pizza? What senses do you use to find it out? You never asked that question before. So the dream pizza to enjoy, you must have a dream sense. Baking senses got your meaning. So the two senses just like that exist within the physical sense. There are some people can see because physical eye. Like madman can see certain colors and certain aura in you. As soon as uh, one of the medium uh, madman introduced her, uh, one of her friends, she looked at the uh, Nina, my partner. Uh, energy is vibrating back and forth. The first thing, as soon as she looked, uh, where is that? Uh, where is it? See that? Uh, there, there she is. See, uh, she did not suddenly see her physical body. She started, oh my God, I saw her energy is moving up and down, up and down. <laughs> Yes, we just we just do have been practicing meditation for several years, lived in the ashram, etc. And as soon as she looked at her, she did not take anybody else, her aura is expanding. So Madam, what was it you seeing that with, with which eye they are seeing? It's not the physical eye. The physical person is only visible five, seven colors. Violet, indigo, green, blue, yellow, orange, red. But seven colors we can see. These seven colors are not colors, they're wavelengths. See, there is a different colors, yellow, orange, etc. It's only different wavelengths. Beyond these wavelengths, one side of the visible color violet, ultraviolet is X-rays and down, very short wave. Other side, infrared and such longer waves exist. Our eyes cannot see these things. So an astral body is not invisible. It's invisible from our point of view because our eyes only take in these seven visible colors. But beyond these colors, your astral body vibrates with a tremendous amount of energy, pulsating. Psychics like Madeline, etc., they see this pulsating energy of the astral body and the aura, etc. And that's what the ghost, when she was explaining about certain so many uh, illustrations she gave about the ghost walking and running and as if it's an ordinary um, uh, tenant of the house. In fact, it happened in England. Uh, one person bought a house in England and then after buying, he sold the owner. He sold the house with a tenant in it. Who is the tenant? A ghost. Literally, that it goes to exist, and that is a she told this. So he won the case. <laughs> and in the, in, especially in England, many other days they could. They have to put this, if there's any ghost in the house, they must put it as a, a ghost also available in the situation. They have to 
physical good. Duct bone means that physical cells are still, the cell I mentioned, is there in the body. Only the visible spectrum of the one wavelength, which is made up of the truth, that is being only removed, but the other spectrum, the Kahnamaya Kocha, which I left in later on, and Anamaya Kocha, and the different type of sheets exist, and that the sheet you are seen as a good. That one spirit is caught in this physical. Started chanting and also he has two jobs for body work there. Because suddenly this woman, though they're very big, and she her voice changes and she violently shakes, and her power is as much as a masculine man. Not in one or two men may cannot stop her. The three or four people necessary to hold her, to control. The initial vibration is so intense, the four or five bodyguards will try to hold her and keep her, and then if as the person who are in the spirit will say, so the different type of vocal work for the voice changes, and my name is such and such, and I am such a place, and give a little history about how he died, etc. And uh, then to conclude the story, the Mantravadi will say, now you have to leave this person, and um, so that he has been offered all the food. And uh, that is the mystery. I do not care about any other thing. As I'm an educated person, I used to watch it. This person, this woman, eats all that food, about eight or ten people's food, as if she has never seen food at all. With both the hands, she swallowed everything. And within a few minutes, the entire plate, or wherever it has been kept, all disappears. Even the huge bottle of curry. And then the ghost will say, well, I will leave this woman and I will come back with that story in. I do not know whether it's actually spirit or what, but that's not my investigation with that time as an end man. I studied physiology, I studied chemistry, I know how the food goes from the mouth, the residual saliva, and then going down to the stomach and then through the intestine. You can only carry a certain amount of food, you all know how much you can eat. But there were eight or ten people's food is there. That entire food disappears by one person. And after 15 minutes that she became normal, she feels normally hungry and goes and eats her normal food. That thing which made me, that what scientific explanation is there for this? So I started asking questions in my childhood. What is this phenomenon? Because I did not too much believe in the ghosts and spirits, etc. So my investigation started in my childhood when I was eight, nine, ten years old. All my life. So I was brought up in that situation. So for me, ghosts and spirits are not new. As he was talking, everything what he said, immediately I remembered my earlier thought. Then I used to go and sit in his study, in my late uncle's study, I used to work. What type of mantra is repeating? What is doing? And uh, all the manuscripts are written in form the ancient days. There were no, and all the still many of the ancient uh, mantra they never used paper. They used only form leaves, and with a name, uh, they used the suppose the form leaf, and uh, there's a big name there, and uh, this name is kept like that, and uh, this thumb, he, he, they make a big, small dent into the into the form leaf. So I opened this family and what type of mandras and so forth. I studied a little bit to understand, but you know, it was all mumbo jumbo those days for me. There was no meaning at all. So that was my first encounter with the ghost and spirits and the psychic phenomena. That amount of food goes into the stomach, it disappears. Why? Why her voice is changed? Nobody can create a voice like a male voice by a female, unless uh, maybe uh, people, uh, uh, sweet children can maybe. Uh, it is very difficult, and the strength of that woman becomes five or ten people. In one other thing, actually, I watched the spirit was a very negative spirit in one of the say uh, this, this uh, particular ceremony, and uh, the spirit began as soon as the spirit manifested, it became so violent that nobody could stop because he's so hungry and bloodthirsty. The spirit, my late uncle, cut his wrist and has to feed the human blood to appease that ghost. There's no other way to appease that. What I'm 
sometimes you could say this phenomena is not something to scare you or to frighten you. For us, it is nothing, <laughs> as you said. This phenomena are as natural as you see a drunkard fighting on the street. So that's what first I want to tell about my life started in this type of family. This happens every new moon, does not on the way. Full moon, it's always new moon, the dark fourth night they do it. This type of black magic study used in exorcism and exorcist. I have seen this in my organ. That is just given a glimpse. For us, this phenomenon is nothing. And why I am interested in this type of not I am personally interested, not it is that anything or I think it means nothing, as the lady said. Same way when I was in Albuquerque earlier days, I was in school, always in the university of Albuquerque. End of the lecture, one student asked a question because it's great story coming from India Himalaya, and uh, I was wearing a wristwatch. Like, unfortunately, I don't have to take it, somebody else. And uh, the student asked the question, Why are you wearing the wristwatch? I said, So I can see the sun. He was paper that guy. He said, Yes, but some kind of bigger answer. Only I'm wearing the watch, so I can see the time. <laughs> So why I am doing this goes or talking in this type of phenomena? So that you Westerners, you look upon this phenomena as supernatural, as beyond the imagination of the scientific world, for whom it is strange and very uh, super uh, um, uh, in, this, in, in your approach in this. For us it is as natural as we play with a tape recorder. All right, great, that's the difference. It has got no meaning for us because we know this happens every day, every minute. Now, what is this philosophy behind all this goes with things such as that? I'll take a little bit into philosophical terms and my own personal experience. First, as John said about, we had Berlin Wall, we had a fire washing ceremony. After we had a fire washing ceremony, we had also a ceremony, first time, a poverty ceremony, which means we have a, a special type of ox made up of specific cloth and other material. And this poverty is carried in religious ceremony through the streets where the Hitler marched in Berlin. But the unique thing of this particular poverty is there are 108 spears and this spear is little less than this thickness and 108 spears are put into the flesh of the body, 108 of them, quarter inch into the body. John Madden, any other? Travis. John, where is John? There. And 108 of them, it took more than an hour to pierce because the it was cold, the spring time, not spring, I think, uh, just before the summer. And uh, it's cold, and uh, the spears won't go into the flesh. We literally push it several times, it broke and then bent. And finally, it took more than an hour. You try to put one needle in your, in your body. How you just put a doctor try to put a needle, you close your eyes. Here, 108 of them, and this none of them is sterilized. Here is our doctor, my dentist doctor is here. And, um, would you put a needle without sterilizing in your patient doctor? Never dare to do. 108 of them without sterilization, and many of them fell down. John saw that. It fall, it sometimes falls on the gummy face directly again, push it through the skin. 108 of them. And then, two hours we walked with that 108 spears, the man was walking all the way to the end of the ceremony, through the same street which are not. Now, can you answer what is the phenomenon behind? Why there is no pain? Of course, maybe mental um, uh, stuff is not good, you can say. Then what happened to the bleeding? You try to put a needle in the bleeding, there is. You ask doctor, can you see anything without bleeding? Can you put a needle? So here the doctor says. And then why there is no infection? It's not sterilized. Any answer, doctor, for that? Can you give me how there is no infection? And after 808 spirits are removed, and uh, John, what was, have you seen any trace of blood anywhere? How do you explain this phenomenon? There comes again the spirit world. And Marilyn, a great psychic, I respect her for her 
honesty, straightforwardness, and truthfulness because I don't know the ordinary people when they do not tell the truth and they pretend and they act as what they are not. Doesn't matter who they are, whether Indian things or American things, I don't care. I will I tell always the truth and expose anyone who is not truthful and honest in the name of Indian and God. I will never anybody take advantage of the human being. But madam, of course, I don't want to go too much. It's a genuine psychic. I expected her. I know her ability and so on. But anyhow, that phenomenon, madam, John also saw before the able to split that 108 spheres, we perform ceremony for several days. For seven days, this man won't eat any uh, ordinary meat, you no know, meat, vegetarians, and no alcohol. We perform, he will take one small meal, etc. But at the end of the ceremony, Madeline saw and John saw, Madeline actually could see the psychic phenomenon. He is an young man. Suddenly, we got to be the very John, maybe tomorrow we can show you something we have time. We put that uh, well in function with that first time, we have some other time. And uh, some other time we can go. Within second of the ceremony, end of the ceremony, the man's consciousness changed. There was a one that person asked me, thank you, 10,000 volt current, literally. Suppose you had such a high voltage current, what would happen to your body? Suddenly there was an, a sudden and, uh, explosion and the burning and the, that exactly happened. He became unconscious and uncontrollable for the two people who took them. And then in that state, trust his body consciousness changed now. And the first need uh, uh, side uh, uh, came to put through his tongue. Straight. No pain. Second, from this cheek to the chest. Second. Then 108 of them took every portion of it. Only after that, I imagine saw also a spirit suddenly entered into this body. That particular moment, his body became violent. It was like touching a high voltage wire. Exactly happened to him. Uncontrollable. And throughout that procession, two and a half hours, three hours, that spirit controlled his body. And only at that time, he is able to do this. And until he came and finished the ceremony, and then end of the ceremony, then he became normal. Then, a small needle you put on his body, he will cry just like anybody can. That is because the ghost and spirit. Some of these spirits do manifest through medium. But in majority of this type of phenomena, ghosts also, spirits, we don't want to use the ghost because so many difficulties explain this word, spirit and the ghost, etc. When these spirits manifest through human beings, they are able to overcome the physiological and the psychological functions of the body temporarily. And that is why this psychic phenomena takes place. As we heard from our venerable lady talking about the ghost, etc. What exactly why this happens? Because these spirits do have a body just like you and me. In the Western psychology and physiology, you will talk only a human being is just a physical body, maybe a soul inside. And still, none of the Western religion explains what is a soul, how the soul functions, they do not know. Now they are able to explain what happens to the soul when the body is dropped on the earth plane. What happens to the soul? This phenomenon is not clearly and definitely explained. But yogis, yoga masters explained thousands of years ago. You have three vehicles, three bodies, not only one body. The physical body is the physical body which you see. This is called Annamaya Kosha. In Sanskrit, it means literally foot sheep. Foot because this physical body is made up of anna, anna means food, which you all know. You take a tomato, and tomato is converted into my body, and you go on with my tomato, eat, eat tomatoes and tomatoes, my body goes like a tomato, and then when I die, you bury me and put a tomato plant, 
the Tamanda Pan, the Ah, you eat me once upon a time, you remember? Now I'm going to eat you. And they're completely converted sort of Swami into the body. <laughs> and you are eating the tomato, you are eating Swami? Which <laughs> you call it tomato? <laughs> you take yes, worm and sugar. No one eats the worm here in America or Canada. Perhaps I've seen another eating worm. But you give the worm to a fish. Uh, fish juicy, juicy, give me more. So fish grows by eating worms. And then you eat the fish. What are you eating, actually? <laughs> you call it fish, but you eat nothing but worms. <laughs> and you eat the fish. And then eventually, you die, and you bury your, bury, and you are buried under the ground. And then who eats you? Worms. <laughs> So the body has come from the food cycle and will go back in the food cycle. And that's called Annamaya Vata. When they said, this human body is not yours, it is came from the food, it will go back into food for something else, food chain. That is not you. That's the most difficult thing for the Western mind to grasp. You feel, oh yes, here is a Catholic, he's a Protestant, he's a black, he's a white, he's an American, he's an Indian. You say this different word, but whether it's American Indian or a uh, fat form, the dumb, whatever it is, you are made up of tomato, pizza, banana. Since this body is no meat, it's vegetarian body. But what it is made up of food, it will go back in the food. So that is not you. First, that's what Yoga Master said. This physical body temporarily is collected from the various food and converted, and you are growing. And it cannot go forever, like this flower, it cannot continuously keep this. It's going to fade eventually and become composed, as uh, just now uh, one of the staff went and learned how to be composed uh, toilet or something she learned from the university. So this becomes composed, and then it becomes food again for the plants or animals. Beyond this physical body, you have another body. That, in Sanskrit we call Sukhma Sarira, or literal translation we can put as subtle body or astral body. What do you mean sushma means? It is exactly like the physical form, but it is made up of energy. Its wavelengths are different from the physical wavelengths, drop wavelengths. This astral body contains your senses, ten senses, five senses of action, and five senses of knowledge. The ten senses, at present we have the physical sense, the five senses of action is hands, legs, nose, uh, mouth, and the excretory organs. The two excretory organs, and the hands and the legs and the mouth makes it five actions, uh, no, uh, senses of action. Then five senses of knowledge, by which we get knowledge of this world, that I hear, no taste, smell, and touch. These ten senses, according to the Western psychologists and doctors, it is the physical body you feel. But nowadays you know that it is not possible if it's only in the physical body, how a person under general anesthesia or a dead person near the experience sees things from another level. That's so many cases are telling them. If it is in the physical body, how is it possible? So our yoga master said, no, 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 these senses are not in the physical body, it is in the astral body. This what you have the physical senses only you are using, only this is visible color, it's a visible spectrum you can use it. But within that spectrum, within that thing, you got the inner eye, the two eye, two senses exist. If that is not so, then we will be able to see, hear, taste, smell, all the time, even the sleep or in the dream. But in the dream, you don't use this eye, you don't eat your ear, you don't eat the taste, touch and taste, but you enjoy your dream. A dream pizza is as good as a baking pizza. How do you enjoy that dream pizza? What senses do you use to find it out? You never ask that question before. So the dream pizza to enjoy, you must have a dream sense. Baking senses got your meaning. So the two senses, just like that, exist within the physical sense. There are some people can see with our physical eyes, like madmen can see certain colors and certain aura in you. As soon as a 
one of the medium uh, man has introduced the uh, one of the friend. She looked at the uh, Nina by far her energy is vibrating back and forth. But the first thing as soon as she looks, uh, where is that? Uh, where is he? She is there. Uh, there. There she is. See, uh, she did not suddenly see her physical body. She started, oh my God, I saw her energy is moving up and down, up and down. <laughs> yes, she is a true yoga, she is practicing meditation for several years, lived in the awesome sector as well. And as soon as she looked at her, she did not say to anybody else, her aura is expanding. So, Madam, what was the you seeing? Which, which eye they are seeing? Is not the physical eye. The physical person is only visible five, seven colors. Violet, indigo, green, blue, yellow, orange, red. But seven colors we can see. These seven colors are not colors, they are wavelengths. There is a different colors, yellow, orange, etc. It's only different wavelengths. Beyond these wavelengths, one side of the visible color, violet, ultraviolet, is x rays and down, very short waves. Other side, infrared lens and longer waves exist. Our eyes cannot see these things. So, your astral body is not invisible. It's invisible from our point of view because our eyes only take in these seven visible colors. But beyond these colors, your astral body vibrates with a tremendous amount of energy, pulsing, psychic, like Madeline, etc. They see this pulsating energy of the astral body and the aura, etc. And that's what the ghost, when she was explaining about current formal uh, illustration she gave about the ghost walking and running and as if it's an ordinary um, uh, uh, tenant of the house. In fact, it happened in, in England. Uh, one person bought a house in England and then after buying, he sued the owner. He sold the house with a tenant in it. Who is the tenant? A ghost. Literally, the ghost exists and that is that she told this. So he won the case. <laughs> And in the, especially in England, many advertisements they put. They have to put this, if there's any ghost in the house, they must put as a, a ghost also available in the situation. In the situation they have to, otherwise, they can sue you. Can you sell the house without telling about what are the fear? Parents residing in any place. This is real. There's nothing, no more. No more is a, 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 a mistake. Actually, the people bought the house and there was a tenant house and she can tell me how an empty house, but there is a tenant living here and he sued and, he sued and won the case. You see that situation. So, anyhow, what they are seeing is these wavelengths, not for the physical wavelengths, which is very broad, which we can see with our eyes. That wavelength, that is very close to our physical wavelength, very close, because they are earthbound spirits. We don't call it ghosts in our world. Earthbound means that physical senses are still, the same senses I mentioned, is there in the body. Only the visible spectrum of the one wavelength, which is made up of the truth, that is being only removed, but the other spectrum, the Pranamaya Kocha, which I left will later on, and Amanamaya Kocha, and the different type of sheets exist, and that the sheet you are seen as a ghost. That's one spirit is caught in this physical atmosphere. That means they are not like ordinary dead people, they go to higher dimension. There are third dimension, fourth dimension, it's also explained there as well. But what they are happening is to this ghost in spirit, so called ghost in spirit, which our learned lady explained and wrote that by her book a little bit. They are talking about earthbound spirit, which you also mentioned clearly, people who are committed suicide or accidents and death and uh, um, mother, etc. Suddenly, the physical body is in shattered. But these people, suddenly their body is being torn away from the physical plane. They are not aware of it, they are dead. Only thing is, they open their eyes, just like you and me, and they see they got a body. And they try to talk, to pass their friends. By half moon here, she's trying to talk to Pat and try to come on Pat, I want to. She won't because she's not seeing that her aura, except some medium she see, or some people who are very close. So they are so frustrated, this earthbound spirit, and they are in the physical plane, they will present an environment. If they cannot enjoy the food, they cannot tell the others they are there, and they are haunts in the same area. In that type of state, deep in the state of mind, again, our learned lady said, yes, the mind, what is the condition of the mind at the particular time of the death? If they are very much afraid and terrified and shocked, just like 
the old phonograph, at the time of the in which they call it, it is called phonograph, the record player, and the needle gets stuck and move on in the same groove and repeat the same thing, same thing, same repeat the exact same thing. Not like the ordinary dance only, you go on giving the whole case only. And they pattern in that one type of wavelength and they repeat the same action again and again every night, as you mentioned, in the same spot, exactly they cry, the last cry or last thing, what they did, they go on, repeat, repeat, repeat. They are unable to get out of that one last thought that powerfully jabbed and drag you into that rut and go on, repeat, repeat, and act the same thing. So many cases are like that. They repeat exactly every night, same kind of, same kind of cry they make. Same type of voice howling you hear, and that's called the hat in that. That's extremely horrible case. They die in painful condition, they end up. Then again, there are different degrees of the ghost in different types they have. Some of them evolved enough. They are able to understand that phenomenon even before they die. They, they believe astral body, all these things. They are a little bit educated. They come out, they are able to a little bit able to understand the situation, and they are able to cope up. And they are much better equipped. In between the different degrees of ghosts and earthbound spirits exist, and they can be helped, and sometimes by the relations and friends, etc., by prayer, etc., by creating the thought vibration. So that is called earthbound state. Now, what is the difference between an ordinary dead person and earthbound ghost spirit? That is, the difference is earthbound spirits exist in the physical plane with us in the same dimension, three dimensional space and time. They see us and hear and taste and smell and live with us with their five senses, which I mentioned. These senses are in the physical body, but the physical senses are cut off. Just like if we amputate the hand, because there's some pain in the hand, and that, uh, still there is a pain, even though there's no hand. In the doctor called phantom pain, or the man is amputated because of some pain in the leg, and after amputation, still there is a pain in the same spot, and he cries. You may think it's his imagination, it's not anymore, because the astral portion of the body is still there. The pain is still in the astral body. This is why doctors cannot understand, so they gave a name, phantom pain. But now, so children, photography, as you have heard several times from John and other etc., you can take a photograph of the children and you see the full aura, and then you cut the leaf into half, and then you take immediately a picture, you see the aura of the full, full leaf. The phantom is no more. You can really see the vibratory <coughs> level of that astral portion of the, as you mentioned, everybody, every living object has got an astral body. So, then when it comes to ghosts and spirits, this is the thing you must understand. They are earthbound and they haunt the houses where they live because they can only perform, their mind cannot go anything beyond that the same action, the last part and last important action they perform in the same house. They are so attached to that, they play piano. They play piano or they switch on light, etc. To inform the, the uh, people they are still alive, they want to communicate. And their communication may be good or bad, or just to enjoy the physical atmosphere again, to get physical warmth, that's why they become, they call, call them haunted. They are actually not haunted, and nothing to be afraid of. They are trying to say that we are alive, and we are as real as you are all. That's what they are trying. And of course there are the good evil, good spirits, evil spirits, just like human beings. There are good human beings and evil human beings, and someone drives around the street, try to you know, attack the people, etc. So, also, some spirits are good, some spirits are evil, some evolve, some not evolve, and so forth. That's what that bond spirit, and that is what called good. But don't try to stop there. That is not that alone. That is the next difficult portion for the Western mind to grasp. That is the lowest, horrible state of a human existence, suddenly the body has been torn off, either by committing suicide, etc. The problem is not all. They are in the earth body state. But in natural death, what happens to you? That's not your astral body. Your astral body is made up of 90 elements. Like the physical body is made up of five elements, earth, water, air, fire, and ether. Earth means drop, water, liquid, fire, energy, air, gases, and ether. The Akasha. These are five physical elements of the physical body is made up of. 
but your actual body is made up of 90 elements. These five elements that's what means draws everything body is made up of 75% water which will go back into the elements. But your actual body is permanent. That contains 19 elements, self elements, which I mentioned five senses of action, five senses of knowledge. Then comes prana. Five pranas are there. Five major prana. Energy. Just like the physical body needs energy, by move my muscle, that is the blood sugar is converted into energy and by combustion through oxygen process, and then my hand is, my muscles are able to contract and expand. Same way, how your actual body moves, it does nothing move without energy. Here the electricity has a bulb out there, but the bulb has got no energy to give light because there's energy coming behind it, so the fan and the air conditioning and all the things behind that electricity. So also behind this body, not only this body has got energy coming from the combustion of the fuel, like the food, but the electrical energy called nerve, uh, prana. This prana is actual energy which makes this body, physical body alive and astral body alive. When this, as long as the prana, prana is not the source, it's not consumed, it's not the source. It is like electricity which moves through the gross nerve as nerve current to the subtle body known as nadi or prana. Yogis control this prana and have control. All psychic people like Mavis, etc., to certain extent, they control over this and then my hand is, my muscles are able to contract and expand. Same way, how your actual body moves, it does nothing move without energy. Here the electricity has a bulb out there, but the bulb has got no energy to give light because there's energy coming behind it, so the fan and the air conditioning and all the things behind that electricity. So also behind this body, not only this body has got energy coming from the combustion of the fuel, like the food, but the electrical energy called nerve uh, prana. This prana is actual energy which makes this body, physical body alive and astral body alive. When this, as long as the prana, prana is not the source, it's not consumed, it's not the source. It is like electricity which moves through the gross nerve as nerve current to the subtle body known as nadi or prana. Yogis control this prana and have control. All psychic people like Mavis, etc., to certain extent, they control over this prana mayakosa. That is the second sheet of the astral body. So I mentioned astral body is made of 90 elements, 10 senses by access of knowledge, Five astral senses to fill the astral body, they fill that. So, are the five prana, the vital energy, prana, abana, dhyana, udana, samana, is quite difficult to give a full explanation. Five prana is actually electricity is one, but you can convert into different vehicles for different purposes. The same 110 voltage current is coming through the bulb, it, uh, it shines, but also if you are using a small bulb, the smaller bulb actually, I do not know if 110 volts here, this must be maybe 6, six volts or 12 volts, and that may be 110 volts. So the energy has to be converted into different voltage and different wavelengths. Same way, this prana has been divided into five wavelengths, and actually ten wavelengths, five minor and five major. I do not want to go too much into complicated subjects. Five major, let us say, prana, which makes your initiation expression possible, that particular wavelength. Abana, which creates a station, and also your sexual experiences, sexual energy is coming through the apana. That's the energy which comes through sexual experience and with ejaculations and so forth. That's apana. And then vyana, which goes through a percolator system and through all the nervous system. And prana, vana, vyana, udana, which makes the hips stick up possible, udana, samana, and certain the eyelid. Constantly you see you move your eye light, eyelid. You just try to see everyone. You can never see a people's eye man is getting eyes straight and you always see that the blinking eyes are there. Whether you like it or not, you blink your eye. So different and the hiccups, etc. So different types of wavelengths there for different forms of punishment, for digestion, for, um, so that uh, uh, you can digest, not because you're digesting, because you have only waste and crimes in the body. So these are the prana which affect your actual body, which exist in that system. So ten, five prana, 10 senses, 50, then four senses of knowledge, uh, uh, psychic function. That is Manubhuti Ahangara Sita, we call it mind, manas, mind, intellect, reasoning, but, uh, that buddhi, ahangara, ego, then uh, third subconscious. These are the four antakarma in the instrument we call it. So when we say mind, mind has got four distinctive functions. First, mind, thinking and doubting, 
than physically interact uh, uh, the, the faculty to uh, reason third is ego and the fourth is subconscious. When you put all these four concepts together, then you call it mind. That's why you get them. These four put together is called Andhakara. So ten senses, five prana and four mental functions together make it 19 elements. So your actual body is called mind, intellect, ego, subconscious, and the ten senses, and all these functions are then your actual body. So when you die, you doesn't mean you are just going to drift and just go like a waste and anywhere. You are exactly what you are now. After death, all the, nothing has changed. You have the same perception, same senses, same reason, same subconscious mind, same type of intellect, and same functions, new functions. Nothing changes after death. You don't become an angel and just leave it as wings flapping around and running around. You know? And uh, some people think, oh, it's because I was a casting, good casting, I went to church every day, every Sunday I got the exam, I went to sit next to the God. That idea is different. You know according to your mental abilities what you are doing now, you do exactly the same and you are drawn to the same group of people, same type of thoughts, because that thought only counts. Here, you are drawn towards this community, this particular function. There are doctors there, engineers there, medicine man is there, and Jesus Christ is there, and Andrew Kimbris is there, and uh, uh, Paul is there, and all, and Patty, of course. Pat is always there with the bottle. But all are drawn together. Why? There are certain thoughts you are thinking the same wavelength. It draws. And so you are. And especially after death, you are drawn to a particular locality of an actual plane which has come a little later, or actual areas and so forth, according to the thoughts you create. It's not that we all go to the same heaven or same plane or same area. That angle mistake, Western mind cannot grasp. Here, uh, Jesus Christ spent all his time in, in the study and, uh, and um, practicing uh, religion in, in a real way. And there's an ordinary Christian, he is there. Of course, a Catholic, he goes to church, but it's a mafia. He also puts that he shoots a person, and then he presents the flower at the, the funeral, and he also, <laughs> he's a Catholic too. <laughs> he shot the person, and then funeral, he brought the flower, and then he did the that. He's not a Catholic. Now, go to the heaven. The same heaven, though, you said, okay, there's one heaven there, so all Christians will go to the same heaven. Then why he has to practice a, a celibacy and live as a spiritual man in a monastery and so forth and only spend his time in this thing. He doesn't have to worry about children, family, etc. And then another man just only doing this type of one dollar in the bill and the prayer like this, he also goes to the heaven. Is there any then justice in that? That's why you have to find it difficult to understand the problem. There are seven planes out there. You say seventh heaven, you heard that. Paul you said seventh heaven. If there are seven heavens, there must be six behind it. <laughs> you can't just say seven without knowing six. So what is the seventh heaven mean? You are the intuitively somewhere you told that seventh heaven means there are seven planes out there. Seventh heaven is only great prophets and seers and the masters and the three who spend their nonsense spirit spend years and years in the monastery. Maybe they are reached a very high stage, they go to the seventh heaven. And um, a Catholic man, he has to be just like that, he got the first heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are mafias who doesn't even do like that. There are seven lower planes out there. Atala Sukhanabha, Salatala, Pradala, Rasadala, so their names are given for that. And so according to your mental vagueness, your actual body will be a vibrate. According to vibration, you are drawn to one of these planes. That is why all Catholics will not go to the same heaven. If that is the one, Father, you don't have to worry about it. You cannot be just like Mark and do like that. <laughs> so that's the difficulty for the Western mind to grasp. That seven planes are that according to vibration level, you are drawn into one plane. Your mind will be drawn. Just like here, you are drawn together, even if you just go and tell them. Uh, outside, Martin is going to get psychic relief. Huh? It's too stupid. It's all collapsed and everything. So they won't believe anything in the spiritual fact. Their mind only vibrates in a very lower level. So they go to the first plane or second plane. Only advanced yogis and spiritual people go to third, fourth, and fifth. And great masters can only go to seventh. And from that seventh plane come the masters like Jesus, etc. They come from the higher plane because they are not living in the lower plane. They come to elevate the human beings and tell them to lift them up, to come up. So they come to the lowest level of the gross physical body, they take incarnation. And while living in the physical body, they do not care about the physical body, as Jesus did not care about the physical body.
body. He did not identify the physical body. He only identified it beyond the body that the soul. He identified I in my part of what? That I is not the body, not the physical body, not the astral body, not the corporal body. It is the soul. That I and Father God are one. And I am in you, you are in me. That I is shining deeply in you and you. That I is in me and we are, I am he. So this is what the true philosophy of Jesus. But how many uh, Catholics and Protestants know about this philosophy? In fact, Jesus was not even a Catholic. Father, <laughs> <laughs> this was a Catholic and Protestant. <laughs> yeah. He was a Jew. <laughs> he was a Jew. <laughs> but yes, he did not say, I am, a, I am the son of Joseph and Mary. He said, I and my father are one. That is actual Vedanta. Aham, we say Aham Brahmatmi. I, Aham, Brahman, father are one. Soham, literally he mentioned the book. Soham is I am he. Soham, I am he. This is what true Vedanta. Jesus did not identify the physical body, nor the astral body, nor the corporal body, nor any of the vehicles. He identified the I am. So that is why they cannot go into any one of the lower dimensions. That is only the purest soul who are in the highest Brahman can go to seventh heaven and beyond that transcendental place. And the ordinary people, we are going to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And still lower heavens are there, other people are there, the variants are different. But you cannot stay in any one place, no matter how far you go, forever. That's another mistake the other Muslims make. There is no permanent place you can stay permanently after death. Because I die now, I leave this physical body, then from that moment onwards, I'm going to eternally live in the heaven with the Father next to the God. That is a superstition. That's not possible. As long as the mind exists, your vibrate level will change. And eventually it must change and transcend all vibrations and go, be, go beyond vibrations. That's what transcendental state. And that's called oneness with the power. Until you realize that oneness, there will be vibrations to be there. You go to different planes and stay there. Higher of the plane, longer the duration, 10,000, 20,000, 500 years we stay. And yet we have to come back. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, this is our philosophy. Abram, do not told us, Sinara, Vishnu, Arjuna, O Arjuna, even if we go to the Brahma Loka, the highest Tapo Loka, even there we have to come back to the physical plane, because here we can only work out karma, your karma means the effects of your action and the desire, only through a physical vehicle, none of the heavens, upper heaven or lower heaven, you can work out your karma or satisfy your desire, you can enjoy and stay there until you have enough money. You have to came to the hotel, you can stay here as long as you pay the bill. And as soon as you don't have a bill, bill what they will say? Just throw you out. And that's what heavens are. No heaven you can stay forever. As long as you got the vibrating level, your good karma is there, you vibrate there. And once the vibrating level is finished, slow down, and they push you down, you have to come back to the physical world, again take a birth to any womb according to your last thought there. You can go into the lower womb, the animal, or plant, or vegetable, or human being, or your demonical womb you can go, depending upon your thought previously created, and then you start your evolution further and further. This way you go on, go on, increase your vibration level, and change your heavenly life in six, fifth, six, seven, and until you go transcend and reach God. So what I'm trying to convey to you all now, Ghost and spirit is the lowest earthbound state. But talk is quite good for you because maybe it is the first time you are introduced to this phenomenon. For you it is something supernatural. Just like for us, a villager in India, you show him television or a tape recorder, it is beyond his imagination. For you, Suppose someone is going to talk to you about television, how can you do television? Who will come for this lecture here? There is nobody. But when they said something, a phenomena which you cannot understand, which scientifically is still beyond your imagination, so you are attracted to that. And the, so some people have little knowledge of the subject. So John and Madeline and others collected these people, like mediums and psychic people and people in different levels, 
and they try to educate you to understand this phenomenon is as natural as you are alive. This flower is natural. But before this flower came, it was in the bud. Before the bud, it was not non-existent form. For your visible state, it was under the earth in a small tiny seed of bud. And it came up. That invisible thing, not the visible color, visible beautiful flower, blossom, you smell all the five experiences for your senses. You can smell, taste, touch and look and enjoy. It was invisible. The invisible spectrum became visible, but you cannot tell forever the visible spectrum again became invisible, go back again. And so the Shakti moves constantly, wavelengths changing and unchanging, expanding and contracting. And one particular wavelength you see, manifestation you see, another level you are unable to see. Only when you are unable to see, you think it disappears. But no more, you are able to understand the subject well, that X ray. Because you cannot see the X ray, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Only thing we need an instrument. Before X-ray was invented, there was X-ray. But you never know where to find out the particular wavelength. So the man who first discovered that energy, light generally cannot pass through a solid object. Suddenly when the light starts passing through a solid object, he saw um, the, the bone, uh, energy bone penetrated into the, he saw the bone. He said, my God, there must be an energy, a, a light. And he could not know what the light is, so he made the name X-ray. It's a boy. He said X. Is a boy. So X-ray came. So how do you take a, a dog with you? You blow the dog with you, you cannot hear. And that doesn't mean the sound doesn't exist. But how do you know the sound exists? Not because of your ear, the dog reacts. Because the reaction of the whole ear, that sound will produce certain sound. Suppose the dog also did not react, you say, oh, there is no sound, it is dark, you say. So that different types of energies exist in this world, but you are only seeing visible spectrum and if best way one experimenting the visible spectrum, now research is started and they are able to investigate this higher spectrum of energy and brought to this level. Otherwise, about 25, 30 years ago, you will see trees, Catholic priests and the um, uh, uh, Jesuit priests and the uh, medicine man of India, we all sit together and talk, it's not possible. Energy level is increasing and we are having certain knowledge together, we are here to bring up this thing. Conclusion, why I am here in that five minutes, I will tell you now. I deserve some job. I am also on a peace mission for seven years. Long before all these nuclear disarmaments and uh, all these uh, peace march came, I had a vision in 1969. A ball of fire. I can't describe its nature. Only I could describe it recently, something like this. The day after the nuclear holocaust. This I saw the vision in 1969. Since then, I started my motion, my movement, peace for the world. I said, What am I going to do? I'm going to inform the humanity. And why I have to inform the humanity? First of all, how I go to humanity? First of all, we have to remove barriers, boundaries. America, Canada, etc. This artificial barriers are not created by God. God created only the planet, God, sun, moon, etc. We divided, I am American, I am a Canadian, and you are a white, you are black, etc. You see this barrier, physical and mental barrier. To remove this barrier, how may all you do? The answer was, take your plane and fly around with your passport and visa. So that was the thing I started my flying mission, and I'm flying from time later after that, I fly to all. Uh, Ireland and the Suez Canal, they gave me the title flying from. Since then, all newspapers got flying, flying from. That's what how we got the name after the first flight. Why I do this? It's very difficult to awaken human awareness. If I just say peace, peace, there's no. Everybody's trying to create, draw the attention by violence, by bombing, by explosion, by hijacking, by the to attract the attention. So I create this attraction. Others, not take other life or create problem. I pass the boundaries and borders without any guns or bombs with love and love. So I go across from Tel Aviv to Cairo with a Jew, an American Jew and myself too, who got passed for visa from Tel Aviv to Cairo, the Suez Canal. When the other side of Suez Canal, there were Arabs and decided to sail and only what we were to labor was a small 
water. And by two over that, they took human in five five over that area. And I want to demonstrate if I five it low, again they are going to go fast for this subject. An American Jew, they are five to an Arab country, that is 1969-70. So what would do an Arab and uh, would be a Jew will be done in an Arab country before fast for this I arrived. I said, I told friend, don't come with me. His name is friend Jackson. He is from Buffalo. No, Sami, my special life is Sami. I'm not afraid. I'll come with you. We both arrived there almost. We were shot down by the Kaylees in Egypt in the long story. But when I arrived in Egypt, even a Jew, he came with the love. A Jew was treated like an honored guest. We both treated it like an honored guest. At that time, Hadad was there. He was not tortured, though we kept him the prison for three days. We got away. Then we can official get the Egyptian to government. They are shown all over the Egypt under Egyptian government money. Even a Jew got a wonderful reception. To prove that, that was my idea, is to prove you go, you know this idea, he's not a Jew, he's not Arab, he's not American or white. He's a, he's a human being. This label has got no meaning. Take a drop of water. I'm thirsty, so I took water and drank. John is thirsty. What did he do? He went and got Coca Cola. And uh, our medicine man was hungry, there and thirsty. He went and got seven. Now, what exactly we are drinking? He got Coca Cola, he got seven up, and I got water. But what is something that quenches the thirst? But something which quenches the thirst? Water. Whether Coca Cola or the seven up or water, it's all water. It's not the name, level, nor the, the taste, not the color, not that the flavor will quench your thirst. Only thing which quenches your thirst is water. You boil Coca Cola, boil seven up, boil orange, boil water, you get what? Pure water. So also, you remove this name, which is labor, Protestant, Catholic, West German, East German, American, Indian, Sikh, that's what's happening. And um, you put these labels, the moment you put the label, you look at the person as, not as a human being. He's fit to be shot. Then, that's why fighting with Catholics and Protestants, killing each other. Hindus and Sikhs. In fact, Sikhs were Actually, Sikhs were not Sikhs. It was not a religion started by Guru Nanak. They found them. They he started the thing from the Hindu. He himself was a Hindu. He called because there was so many injustice. There was no one to protect women and children. So Guru Nanak, a Hindu, he thought up and told, "Okay, I want few people to defend these innocent women and children." So he told every Hindu family, "Give one son from your family, and he will just become a warrior to protect these innocent people." So he collected people from the from the Hindu family and each family gave one son and the he will do only the and he will carry the, 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 the spear and the um, uh, sword and the, all the five things he has to carry. So the Sikh religion is created only to protect me the Hindu. In fact the names are called the Govind Singh. You can see all the names of the Hindu religion here. And so he told even now you will see many of the Sikhs coming from the Hindu sect that they are actually drawn for this purpose. But long time ago, he did it for a particular purpose. Now that purpose is over. There's no more for, a new, different type of Sikhism government. So now what they do? They fight. They say, oh, he's a Sikh, he's a Hindu. So they're killing each other. What happened just now here? Catholics and Protestants, Jews and Arabs. In, what the difference between Jews and Arabs? They were cousins. <laughs> you don't remember that? Jews and Arabs are cousins, is it not? If, who are their, who's their, who's their ancestors? Abraham. It's not Abraham. His original name is what? Abrami. His name is Abrami. <laughs> Abraham was original as Abrami. He was Abrami, not even a man. <laughs> and he has the two sons, and that comes the, the two different things. They're actually cousins. Suppose Abraham comes in a sea, their own dance, they, 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 they dancing or fighting and killing. How much, how much suffering he will have? So you look at Catholics and Protestants, they're only started with what? Catholics are Protestants, Christians, and then become their killing man. So why is it happening? This label is the cause. The moment you put this label, you forget who is who. They are not human beings. This is the purpose of my speech card. Why I'm doing this? Now that's conclusion. God says, bear me a few minutes, please don't
because we never thought of like this. As I came here, we are talking about haunted houses. As I mentioned, what is haunted house? That's about space. This whole planet Earth, with five billion people, four billion people will just you take this water and pour it on a very red hot iron and pour this water. What happens? It disappears. So your body is made up of 75 percent water. With 100 million Celsius heat coming from an atomic bomb exploded over Montreal, about a mile high, it is like heat is the center of the sun. Within a fraction of a second, lightning speed, this heat will reach a wide area. Only a fraction of a second, it touches your body. Your body will, your physical body will vaporize, not disintegrate. Not only body, buildings and everything will, within three miles radius, everything will vaporize. Nothing will be there. Now imagine, suddenly you are here, within a fraction of a second, not in a second, fraction of a second, you don't have a body. And that happened not one or two or three, several million people on this planet Earth. Because America and Russia have about 50,000 nuclear bombs to destroy 40 times this planet Earth. And once that nuclear war started by pushing the button, no general, no president, no one can say you because the general will vaporize the world. Four billion people or ninety percent of the population vaporize. How many of born spirits are here? You can just guess. And even if they just die and go to the next place, maybe first or second place, do you think what suffering they bring to that lost heart is such a painful and sudden torn to tearing of their body from the physical world? Astral plane will be filled with these people coming from this planet for us. Do you think astral plane is just a place you can just relax in? It is your last thought count, your good behavior, what you have done to your own, don't have that experience with us. There are also social people and the priests and yogis are all there to help these in newcomers to that place, how to adapt and adjust to their society, their way of life. But many of these people never will build up thoughts and vibrations. And what a confusion they are going to create with us after death. You think if there's a happiness and peace and there's nothing to worry after death, then I am the first person to push the button and destroy this planet Earth and send you all to the next heaven. You go and just laugh forever. If that is so easy, then I will destroy this world this minute. But do you understand the suffering afterwards after the leaving this planet Earth at that kind of mental condition? What a condition you have? You never thought of that. That's the main purpose of bringing man and, and all his functions to inform you and the people like uh, Reagan, and Reagan and uh, Andhra Ho, etc. They think that power is going to... <laughs> they are just small children. Their brain is just like the mouse brain. They think that power is going to help. They don't understand what is happening to this planet Earth, how many billions of universe is there, how many parallel universe is there. They don't understand that. They only understand the power of the gun and the nuclear bombs they are having. They are counting like children. And what a situation we will have to this planet Earth if we go. Yesterday, there was, I was just trying to stop with the nuclear beacon. Even if we survive the nuclear, then some people, a friend person will survive. Then there will be the sun will be blocked for years and years without any sun. There will be no vegetation, all vegetation will be destroyed, there will be only snow everywhere, and the, all living things will die. There is no survival in any form on this planet Earth. Yesterday there was TVC, there was a, a, a report of the nuclear winter that the scientists are talking about. What is happening to this planet Earth? So now you see why I am interested in the ghost history. That's not my purpose. For me, there's nothing. I have seen all my chances. Those who have educated your PhDs and MAs and philosophers here, for you, you cannot understand beyond this physical visible spectrum. That's why my peace must be started. I'm not talking the peace only in this planet Earth. We also should have the peace in the other dimensions when we meet here. If we cannot live in the natural way with the sudden disaster of these five billion people from this planet Earth, there's chaos there in that place. There is no peace for millions and millions of years in that place. Now you can reincarnate in this place where the earth is completely polluted. There's such a situation. Chaos in this next place, there is no way I can describe. This is what I saw, that's why I am I peace in the future. I'm not talking the peace in this planet Earth. If you all die and just go to the next plane and that's uh, quite happy tomorrow to push the button, I will be the next president of the universe and press the button and destroy the world. But the world is not going to finish, not you are going to finish. You are suffering in 
matters of 